Hello, students. Good evening. How are you? Hello. I'm fine. Thank you. And you? Hi. Good evening. Uh, hello. Good evening. Welcome. It's a pleasure. Pretty good. Um, I'm ready just to start a class this day. <laughs> Always like encouraged and motivated to, to study English with you guys. So thank you for the responsibility to be on time. I finish a class and after the class, I move immediately to this group. So I'm very excited to, to have a great class this day. Um, we will continue talking a little bit about quantifiers. That was one of the topics that we couldn't uh, develop yesterday. Well, we have a lot of activities talking about some important topics about families, about getting married, different topics that were very interesting for you guys. So um, also that uh, analyzing that vacations are coming, right? Are you ready for your vacations? Or you won't have vacations? I don't have vacation. You, you will have vacations? No. No, I don't have. No, you don't have vacations. Me so, too. Oh my goodness, so bad. So bad for you guys. No vacations, but more money. It's important. However, but uh, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so people say, teacher, I don't have vacations, but maybe money, it's important. It's a priority. <laughs> okay. So, and well, so it's important to have some plans for vacations. I know some of you will have the opportunity to have a great vacation. So Adriana, will you have vacations? No, I don't have vacation. You don't have vacations too? Oh my God. I am the only one with vacations. Because I am a mom. Oh, you are a full-time mom. Okay, so good luck, Adriana, good luck. She doesn't know what vacation is, okay, for this time. Okay, uh, Claudia, do you have vacations? Claudia, Jocelyn, do you have vacations? Excuse me, acabo de entrar, no sé qué estaba preguntando. Oh, oh if, uh, do you have vacations or will you have vacation? Vacation time, no. Vacaciones, no. Que si tengo vacaciones, pero como. I mean, because we are on December, in December, so many people don't work some days in December. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. That's I have um, <laughs> okay. Well, she will have vacations. Great, nice. And Carla, Carla, Tatiana, do you have vacations in Christmas? Good evening. Uh, no. I'm in vacation because I don't have a job. Oh, so you, you <laughs> have a job, so you are you have vacations. Okay, good. Yes, yes. Okay, that's that's okay. All right, so take a time for that. And what about Noé? Do you have vacations? I I am working now. You you don't have because you work. Uh, no trabajo. Oh, you don't work. Oh, you don't work. Okay. Okay. After that, you will have uh, too much job. So we have a lot of things to do. Well, um, let's start today with the class, and also you can appreciate that the topic it's uh called the quantifiers. And uh, I will share with you the presentation for this class today. So we go on to lesson number 14. And uh, remember that we finished our English course. This course with me um, this coming Thursday, the last classes we had. So you had to continue studying. You had to continue working in this course, in this project because the most important is that we learn. As I told you before, learning English is a process that we cannot like take some specific time to learn. So every day we are learning, every day we're practicing. Entonces, pues hay que seguir estudiando, hay que prepararse. Eh, para todos los que hemos estudiado inglés, sabemos que, que el inglés 
pues no se aprende de la noche a la mañana, es un proceso. Hay que tener paciencia porque no todos aprendemos al mismo ritmo. Hay personas que aprenden inglés muy rápido por diferentes recursos, otros que les cuesta un poquito más. Pero independientemente del tiempo que nos tomemos para aprender, lo importante es que, que vayamos haciendo el esfuerzo porque al final pues usted lo tiene que aprender. Entonces es algo que, que pues hay unas personas que toman el tiempo para practicar. Un ejemplo les doy es de que pues depende del tiempo que usted le dedique a, al aprendizaje del idioma, pues así también va a ser el tiempo que va a aprender. Eh, mientras más estudia un, más continuo, pues el aprendizaje es mucho más corto. Mientras usted deja de practicar, eh, se hace más lento el aprendizaje y así sucesivamente. Entonces, pues tenemos que seguir eh, independientemente, hay que seguir preparándose. Bueno, yo tengo muchos años de, de haber estudiado inglés, tengo muchos años de también de haber trabajado, bueno, de seguir trabajando con la ley de inglés también y pues tengo mucha experiencia y pues he trabajado también eh, muchísimo con personas eh, nativos de habla inglesa y pues déjeme decirle de que a pesar de que bueno tengo muchos años en esto siempre sigo practicando porque el inglés es así eh, no nos garantiza de que ah bueno yo tengo tantos años de hablar inglés sí pero eso no significa de que porque ya lo estudié no lo voy a repasar al contrario eh, tienes que seguir practicando tienes que seguir estudiando repasando y eso lo hago yo por ejemplo eh, especialmente si estás aquí en el país donde un, un porcentaje muy alto de personas hablan español. Sus vecinos, en su trabajo, la televisión, todo es en español, ¿sí o no? A menos que pues, usted tenga un, tenga un contexto donde pues, hablen inglés en su casa, pero si todo nuestro contexto es en español, pues nosotros tenemos que buscar esos espacios como para practicar un poquito más inglés. Eh, so that's one of the advantages we have about our language. So this is a recommendation, some tips that can help you. Like there are some sources like applications that can help you to study English, like grammar, vocabulary. Also, you can listen to music in English, some series in English, movies in English, TV programs, books, interesting books in English, online, physic, uh, physical books. I mean, you have a lot of resources. I mean, I know that our context is Spanish, but we had to like look for the resources. We had to look for the ways to have Uh, contact with the language. Okay. Okay. So I, I have a, I have a doubt. Yes. Uh, I could not open the the archive. I I don't know. It's only me or, or another. Uh, the same the same problem. Uh, you cannot open uh, the presentation. Yes. Yes. Uh, are you, you using your computer? I don't know. Oh, I, I know uh, because I I ask, ask I ask you if only me or another we have the the same problem. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, but, but the question is: Are you opening the file in your computer or in your cell phone? In the cell phone. Maybe you don't have a, an application that open the Word documents or the PowerPoint document. Yes, I have in the in the cell phone uh, another the archive, the last archive. Yes, I I, I could uh, I I can I could open mm -hmm. uh, because yeah. I'm using the, the same one. I'm, I'm using the same format. Uh, okay. You don't have problem. I open it in the cell phone. You can't. Yes, I have. I, I oh. can. Okay, uh, only me too. So what you, what, you can yes, do, uh, what you can do is you can oh, uh, power off and power on the, the cell phone and try to open the file. So perhaps the cell phones need to be reviewed. So you can do that, like a simple strategy, like power it off and power it on and then try to open the file to see what happened. Yes, no, today, today only, today only yeah. the file. Yes, today. That's why, that's why yes, it yes, can help. Okay. Yeah, sometimes needs to like reviews to the system. Yeah, yes. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the quantifiers. This is the topic. And uh, you can see from zero to 100. Look at this one. And uh, the question is, um, what do you understand about quantifiers? Who wants to help me 
to um to know what are the quantifiers. And well, the quantifiers are also in Spanish are called quantificadores. In English are words that are used to give a reference to an amount. For example, a little, a lot, few. So those are called quantifiers. Entonces los quantificadores o los quantifiers nos indican a nosotros la cantidad de un nombre, nos indican la, para hacer referencia a cantidades. Por ejemplo, bastante, poquito, mucho, cercano, eh, no muchos, pocos o ninguno. A eso se le llama quantifier. Quiero que se acuerden del contexto. Los quantifiers nos sirven para referirnos a cantidades dentro de una oración o de un contexto. Those are what we call quantifiers. Y la traducción pues sería cuantificadores. ¿Se recuerdan de este tema o se recuerdan de los quantifiers? And you can check here the next one. We have old, near, nearly old, and most. So all, it's like 100%, and then it's like getting down, like nearly all, most, many, a lot of, some, not many, a few, few, no one. So you can check the context also of this one. So look at the context, perhaps that, Would yes? I have a question. What is the difference with uh, adverse frequency? Adverse of frequency? Yes. Okay, the difference about the adverse frequency are that the adverse frequency, as the word says, the adverse uh, give a description about the noun or about the verb. And the adverse of frequency give us how frequent uh, we do something, how frequent we do something. For example, if we do sometimes, never, usually. For example, if you study English, but when you study English, sometimes, usually, never. So give us the frequency about something. It's very different to the quantifiers. Es decir, que los adverbios de frecuencia nos indican con qué frecuencia hacemos algo. En cambio, los quantifiers es algo distinto porque aquí nos habla de cantidades. Si nos habla de bastante, si nos habla de poquitos, si nos habla de muchos. That's the difference between both. Thank you. You're welcome. So you can see here all. Uh, what would be the, the, the meaning in Spanish about all? ¿Cuál sería el significado? All. Yeah. In Spanish, todos, todos right? Entonces, todos. por eso tiene un 100%. All families have only one child. Todas las familias uh, have only one child, so it's 100%. Uh, what would be the meaning in Spanish about nearly all families? Casi, Casi todos. Casi todos. Exactly. So we're talking about like 90%. Could be. I don't know. That means that it doesn't take the 100%. What about the most? What's the meaning about most? Mayoría. La, mayoría. La, mayoría. La mayoría, ok. The most. La mayoría, muy bien. Um, many. Muchos. Muchos. Uh, many families are smaller these days. Uh, muchos. Es decir, que pueda tener un 70%, like 70% um, of the level of a quantifier. A lot of. What is the meaning about a lot of? Lot of, los pocos. Mm, a lot of. A lot of. Alguno. Bastantes. No, 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 no. Bastantes. Bastantes. So that is like what we call a lot of. A sum. What's the meaning about sum? Algunos. 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 Muy bien. Some. We're talking about the 50%, like uh, 50, not many. What's the meaning about not many? No muchos. No muchos, mm -hmm. no muchos. okay. Um, what is the meaning about a few? Unos pocos. Unos pocos. 
And uh, few, ¿qué significa few? Poco. Pocos, right? So, pocos. And no one. Ninguno. Ninguno. Nadie. Eh, imagínense que le digan, no one gets, gets married before the age of 18. So, so it's uh, something that we were discussing yesterday, right? That no all families, folks. Not all people get married and some specific ages. So we can check the quantifiers because they give us, uh, they this vocabulary give us some ideas about amount. So it says rewrite these sentences using the quantifiers and then compare it with a partner. Look at the example. In China, 50% of women get married by the age of 22. So it says that we had to rewrite these sentences using quantifiers and then we compare it. Um, if we're talking about a 50%, what quantifier we can use? Many. A lot of. A lot of. Um, but I think that the 50%, some a lot of or some could be some. Uh, some could be some i guess it's like the half la mitad verdad algunas eh, que son 50 por ciento o puede ser a lot of or some so we can like guess right we can guess uh, one of them in china some women get married by the age of 22 Uh, no sé si pueden ver el chat. Me dicen si pueden ver el chat. Can you see the chat? Yes. We have uh, women and we have women. It's totally different. When the word starts with E, so we're saying that it's plural. Mujeres. So the pronunciation will be women. And when the word is singular, we use a, that means woman. Women, woman, women, woman. Women, plural, woman, singular. Yes? Yes. Women. And that is the same case with men and men. So men and men. Uh, men with e is plural. A lot of men. Singular, man. It's like a e so men y men men y men like not. superman the pronunciation is a little bit similar es un poquito similar la pronunciación solo que para hombre pues usted va a decir man man sino que es como men y está men men y men so that is the difference con e es cuando lleva la e pues es plural tanto para mujer como para hombre, y cuando solo lleva la A, pues es para hombre en singular o mujer en singular. Ok. ¿Es that ok? Yes. Yes. Women, woman. Men, men. So that's the way. Three men, eh, no, because men is a irregular plural acuérdense de que hay palabras que Three son men. irregulares hay palabras que son irregulares por ejemplo usted ve que hay algunas palabras que no se les puede agregar eh, no se les puede agregar una S como por ejemplo digo carros en inglés digo cars, le agrego una S pero hay palabras que pues las palabras son plurales irregulares entonces, pues, este man and woman es un caso como estos. Es un plural irregular, entonces no tienen que llevar una S. Entonces, oh, yes. three men, three, three, men. Man. three, three women, men. four three. women, five women. So you can say that. Women. Coach in woman, the pronunciation is 
um, woman. I'm sorry. La pronunciación es woman. Women. Woman es singular. Puede repetir por favor cómo woman, se pronuncia woman. el singular y cuál es el plural. Woman, women. Woman, ok, como woman. habíamos dicho, woman, eh, woman. women es para plural. Women, women. women. Y el singular es woman. Yes. Sí, gracias. Ok, y ahí Francisco nos pone el ejemplo de people y person. Por ejemplo, people es para el plural, para decir personas. Usted no va a decir people, no, sino que es, es un plural irregular, porque esto no necesita eh, una S o S o IS. Entonces decimos people para personas y para singular es person. Wolf para lobo, wolves para lobos. En este caso, pues, a... Uh, Cambia. Eh, por ejemplo, tenemos la palabra children. Eh, children sería para nosotros niños, right? Entonces ya va en plural. plural. Ya va plural children. Child. Ya no tiene que agregarle ninguna S. Y el singular es child. Child, children. Y así pues usted va con los, con los um, irregular, plural, irregular. Like, como hoja, leaf, left, you know, leaves, so you can also use the regulars. Anyway. Kill, ¿qué significa? Es niño. Yeah. Kill. Sí, niños. Eh, son sinónimos, como child, kid, mm. toddler, son sinónimos. Mm -hmm. Gracias. Yes, yes, yes. Entonces, para que, you know, how to use that. Bien, vamos con la número dos. Number two, in Australia... And 87% of married couples, couples, you say couples, couples, uh, have children. Number two, what do you think could be the, um, the number two? What person, what quantifiers we can use? Also, I think it's most. Most. Most? Um, most. Eh, ¿Cómo podríamos formar esta oración utilizando el most? In Australia, the most of married couples have a children. Uh, most married couples, uh, most uh, married couples have children. Okay, so you can use most. It's like um, 87%. Most married couples have children. Okay. It's interesting, right? Um, what about, let's see, number three. In the United States, it says 0%? Yes, no one. No, one. No one. Uh -huh. Complete the sentence. In the United States, no one of people vote before the age of 18. Okay, so that would be in the United States, no one vote. No one vote before no the age. Mm -hmm. No one vote before the age of 18. of 18. Because they are not legally citizens, like officially uh, an adult. Maybe we could say mm -hmm. an adult citizen as part of examples. En ese caso, teacher, eh, no se pondría el, el people, people, sino que se entendería por no, no one que no nadie, no, que ninguno lo hace. Exactly. Eh, this, no, is like, no. this is like Spanish. Es, es como el contexto en español. ¿Verdad? Eh, en los Estados Unidos, nadie, pues, ya no tendría que necesitar decir people porque se refiere a nadie. Um, like examples, and the number four 35 percent of the people in Germany live alone. And which one we can use? A few, um, a few percent. 
uh, 35% of a few and in Germany live alone. A few people uh, a few. in Germany, yeah. They live alone. So we're talking about 35%. So we could say a few. few. Unos pocos o pocas personas. Few people. Yeah, a few or a few. Uh, si dijéramos a few es como unos, unas pocas personas. Pero si dijéramos few people sería como pocas personas. Few people live alone in Germany. Okay, exactly. Okay. So that would be great. So we can check the context. Excellent. And uh, the next one, number five, 78% of American high school students have job. Veamos. Many. Um, ¿Cuál sería? Many. First. Many or most. Uh, most mm -hmm. Americans uh, mm -hmm. Most American high school students have jobs, or many high school students have jobs. Most. Most American high school. Ma many have jobs. is for countables. Yes, but in this case, it's countable because we're talking about students. For me, it's most. Most uh, high school students have jobs. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. So that we that we can work. So we can like uh, guess the percentage or the percent that we're using for this one. Okay. Um, any comment or equations? No. 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 It's okay. All right. Let's continue with the next exercise according to this one. And let me check. We have some practical exercises of vocabulary. Uh, one second. Okay, look at that. Um, choose the correct answer. We have uh, some, any, much, many, a lot of, a little, and a few. So what I want you to do is to take a short time to complete the following exercise. So you will help me with this part and you had to select the best answer. So just give me one second. Meanwhile, uh, we check the exercises. We will check the attendance list. So check the exercise and then we socialize the answers together, okay?
Okay, um, so let me check here the, the attendant list. Okay, let me check. Um, Adriana Gretel Gonzalez. Here. Agustin Alexander Santa Maria. Agustin Alexander. Andrea Esmeralda Álvarez Escobar. Present. Araceli Esmeralda Ventura Vázquez. Carmen Andrea Santos Martínez. Present. Eh, Claudia Jocelyn Rivas Arevalo. Present. Denise Alonso Marinero Gutiérrez. Denise Alonso. Francisco Alexander Villafuerte Flores. Present. Francisco Javier Orellana Ortiz. Freddy José Álvarez Escobar. Eh, Gabriela Guadalupe Zamor. Eh, Gabriela María Peña. Gerson Vinicio Moreno Funes. Present. Eh, Glendy Elisset Flores Ramírez. Present. Eh, Jennifer Raquel Ayala Vázquez. Jonathan Vladimir Salinas Alberto. Present. Carla Liliana Portillo Constante. Eh, Carla Tatiana Villanueva Serrano. Present. Catherine Yasmín Guatemala Arias. Present. Eh, Luisa Ariana Guerra Cáceres. Present. Margarita Elizabeth Panameño Guzmán. Eh, Mayra Patricia Pérez de García. Present. Eh, Nerlin Jaciel Flores Reyes. Present. Noé Alberto Calzadilla Herrera. Presente. Eh, Wendy Patricia Chavarría Ayala. Ok. Thank you guys for your attendance here in this class. Ok, so I think we are almost ready. Yes or not? Are you ready? No yet? Yes, I am. Okay, so let's work together with, with the following exercise we have here. Okay, look at the first one. And so you will help me with this exercise. It's a very, very simple exercise. So we know that what possible answers we can choose for this. A ver, con la primera. Uh, voy a utilizar capital letter para que pues, se pueda ver la palabra. Es decir, vamos a romper las reglas aquí. Uh, there aren't. Which one do you think could be the best choice for this? There aren't any cards parked in the center of offers. There aren't any. Also, we can use there aren't. Uh, okay. Any cars, and also we can use there aren't many car parks in the center of Oxford. So we can use that one too. Okay. 
Yes, I think it's there. there are many because uh, any is not. It's like, no, exactly. Like, como que no hay, right? So the best choice would be many in this case. Number two, eating out is expensive here. There aren't. A lot of. Lot of. Lot of. We can use a lot of. Also, we can also use any. There are possible choices that we can use, like uh, no hay muchos restaurantes baratos. So there is a possibility to use a lot of. And also, there aren't many cheap restaurants. También podemos utilizar como que no hay muchos restaurantes baratos. So there are any, we can use many, we can use a lot of as possible choices in this exercise. Okay. Yes. I was decir que hay más de una opción. La número tres. Uh, Liverpool has of great nightclubs. A lot of. A lot of. How many? Or many. Uh, okay. A lot of. Many. Nos, nos quedamos con eso. A lot of. A few. Uh, bueno, como tiene of, entonces nos quedamos con a lot of o um, many great nightclubs. Ok. Yes. Uh, number four. Hurry up. We only have some, some time before the coach leaves. Ok, podemos utilizar some. Also, we can use a little time. Hurry up. We only have a little time before the coach leaves or oh, some time before the coach leaves. We can use this choice too. Good job. It is a good job. So we can compare the two possible choices we have with this exercise. Um, number five, we saw... A lot of... Many. Much. Pero solo dice scenery. Entonces. Eh, no son, contable. Much. Podemos utilizar some beautiful scenery when we went, when we went to Australia. Uh, so we can see the best choice for that. We saw a little beautiful scenery. A menos que, que se refiera a que era algo pequeño, right? Well, some beautiful scenery. Two possible choices, some or a little. Number six. There are... Much? Mm, Many? Tiene que llevar mm -hmm. a... a little? Okay, puede ser a few. lot of shops or a few too. Muy bien. Uh, puede ser a lot of a few shops near the university. Porque shops es contable, entonces shops podemos contar. Entonces o usamos a few o a lot of shops near the university. Number seven, it's pretty quiet. There aren't any, many, many. Okay, there aren't many people here today. No hay muchas, muchas personas. Okay, there aren't uh, many people here today. No hay muchas personas. No hay muchas personas aquí hoy. Está bien calmado. It's very quiet. Okay, so we can use that. And the next one. There are expensive new flats next to the river. Much. There are more some. expensive. Some. Some expensive new flats next to the river. 
Okay, so also there is like, there are many expensive new, new flats next to. Also, we can use uh, some, we can use many too. So there, there is a possible choice with that. Um, do you know the, the meaning about flats? No. Flats and apartments. Yeah, a flat is also considered as an apartment. Um, yes? Un piso también le llaman. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like related to an apartment, of course. And so also most of the time flat is more used in England than in America. So in America it's more common to say apartment, but in England people call flat. So if you go there, they, they won't say, oh, you're looking for an apartment. They will say, hey, you're looking for a flat. And also with the accent. Okay, let's go with the next. Vamos con el siguiente. Uh, preguntas about this exercise? No. Not for me. No, no, right now. Okay, choose the correct answer. We have to use a few or a little. Remember that a few is for countable things, and a little is for no count noun things. So I will give you a short time to try to complete this exercise and then we will socialize together. Take a short time to answer.
Okay, ready? Yes, yes, yes. Are you ready? Yes. Let's do yes. It. Okay, this is a pretty easy also. You can help me with that one, right? So it's a piece of cake. He speaks what? A few or a little? A little. A little. A little. So it's very easy. Number two. A few. A few. A few. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Uh, number three. A little, a little. Yes. And a little butter. Number four, the teacher gives us? A few time. A little. A little time. A little time a little. to prepare. It's uncountable. An uncountable. Uh, there are only, number five. A few. A few. A few days. A few days. It's countable. Uh, number six, I both. <laughs> A few, a, few. A, few. a few apples in this shop. Uh, could I have a little, a little, a little milk? A little milk in, in my car. Uh, microphone, please. A little miss. Microphone. A few. A few. Um, it's look, there are a little. A, a few mice yeah. on the roof because it's countable. Yeah. Yes. So you can check here uh, the exercise using a little and a few. Remember that a little is for things that we cannot count. And things, a few for countable things. Okay, questions before we continue with the next. No. Okay, let's go with the next one. We had to select between some or any. Also, this is easy too. And I give you uh, two minutes to think about the possible choices. Okay, let's check with the first one. And so you will help me with that. We need what? 
Some. Some. Some bananas, right? Bananas. Um, yes. You can't buy. Um. What? Some poster. Uh, any posters in this shop? Look at that. We haven't got some some some, some oranges yeah. at the moment. So in that case, we can use some, or also we can use any, right? Any oranges or some oranges at the moment. So we can, we have the opportunity to choose both. Like in the exercise, also number two, but it's like more common to use any in negative form. Um, look at this one. Uh, Peter has both. Any? Some. Some. Um, new books. Yes, that's right. Some new books. So. And look at the next one. Uh, she always takes any. Any. She any always sugar. takes some sugar because it's um, the most appropriate. Any is most of the time used for negative or for equations. Any is used for equations or for negative statements. Number six, I have seen some some nice postcards nice post in this souvenir shop. So in that case, some will be the best choice. Some nice postcard. That's okay. That's okay with that. And yes. Number seven. There aren't any any folders in my bag. So the best choice would be any. And the last one. Some. Um, um, I have some. Basically. Any. Some magazines for you. I mean. Recordemos que any se ocupa más que todo para preguntas o para forma negativas. Eh, nunca se va a ocupar any para forma afirmativa. La función es son, es para más que todo para función afirmativa. Son magazines for you. So that will be uh, the exercise between some and any. It's a little bit more than practice. Okay, so because of the time we couldn't uh, complete this activity, but it's gonna be part of the activities for the next class. So we had to think about a personal experience, writing time. It says writing an email about your family. So look at this exercise. Write an email to your e-poll about your family so a friend could be a friend could be a colleague and you will describe your family look at the uh, example we have here dear john john thanks for your email now let me tell you about my family my parents are coffee farmers most families here are small I have one older sister, but I don't have a brother. My sister's name is, so you can like describe about that. If you remember, in the last class, we were talking about something, something interesting about your family. In this case, you had to write a short paragraph describing or talking about your family. So you can talk about some details, about their names, about what they do. What do they do? What they like? What they don't like? The ages? So you can describe that. So this activity will be done in the class tomorrow in the first time. And also after that you have written this short writing, 
we will um, socialize with the small groups this information. So that's why it's, it's very valuable that you can uh, add some details about your family, like their names, their ages, what do they do, what they like, what they dislike, or something interesting that you would like to add about this short writing. This is gonna be done for tomorrow, and I know that the time is actually going so fast. No sé si tienen alguna pregunta sobre esta actividad. No. Okay. Yes. Uh, question. Yes. Uh, in this activity, we uh, make um, uh, home homework or only uh, tomorrow practice. It's it's I mean it's uh it's not a it's an activity that you have to develop of course but it's gonna be done in class, so tomorrow at the first time we will I will give some time to check your writing, and after that we will discuss or we will read or paragraph through groups. So this activity will be developed in class. So if you want to do it before the class, you can write it. And when we say, okay, this is the time to share the paragraph, you can do that, okay? Entonces, le voy a dar unos minutitos para, por si alguien no logró terminar su párrafo, yo le voy a dar unos minutitos para que lo completen. Y si pues todos lo tienen, pues entonces vamos a entrar de una vez a, a poder compartirlo con los grupos. Okay. okay, thank you. You're welcome, guys. Okay, so I think this time is up. Um, we have concluded the class today and also congratulations for the work done. So I hope to see you tomorrow. See you. Okay, good night, everybody. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bye.